Welcome to Infectious Disease Lesson 3.1, The Zoo in You, Our Microbial Ecosystem and Ebola. The goals of this lesson are to explore some circumstances and virulence factors that lead to pathogenicity and emphasize the idea that pathogenicity is a dynamic host-microbe interaction. At the end of the lesson, the students should be able to describe three properties that pathogenic microbes possess, define virulence, microbiota, and microbiome, and give an example of how a microbe can be a pathogen in one host but not in another. We'll achieve these goals by watching two short videos that illustrate how circumstance and virulence factors impact pathogenicity. During the videos, the students will take notes and discuss their observations. To prepare for this lesson, you'll need to review the following key scientific concepts. Virulence factors are tools a microbe uses to bypass host immune barriers to infect the host. And pathogenicity is a host-microbe interaction. You can review this scientific content in the background reading provided for you in the teacher primer, the teacher manual, and the student workbook. The teacher primer provides in-depth knowledge about the scientific content presented in this lesson. The teacher manual, or lesson plan, provides a minute-by-minute -minute explanation of the lesson structure, and the student workbook provides additional explanation for students. Note that an annotated version is also available for teachers. Be sure to print the lesson worksheet, which is located in the Lesson 3.1 Curriculum Materials, and the Jigsaw Homework Reading, which can be found in the Classroom Materials folder for Lesson 3.2. This lesson also requires watching two video clips about virulence factors and Ebola. The video clips are embedded in the PowerPoint slide deck, and you'll want to confirm that they play properly on your computer before using them in class. The key points of the do now are that a pathogen is a microbe that can bypass host immune barriers and pathogens need tools to bypass host barriers or an opportunity when the barriers are damaged. The do now begins by brainstorming what a microbe needs to become pathogenic. This asks students to consider the two main factors that impact pathogenicity, the microbe and the host, more specifically, virulence factors and immune barriers. Note that the lesson worksheet will be used throughout the do now and activity. The key points of the activity are that bacteria use virulence factors to survive in hostile environments and bacteria can coordinate their use of virulence factors, enabling them to act like a multicellular organism. We'll get there by watching two video clips about virulence factors and Ebola. The first video clip is a TED Talk with Bonnie Bassler. While watching the video clip, have your students take notes in their worksheets. Bonnie's talk focuses on how communities of bacteria use virulence factors in coordinated responses to changes in their environment. Next, have the students relate what they have learned to how virulence factors can be used to bypass host immune barriers. The second video uses an Ebola outbreak to introduce the idea that in addition to virulence factors, a microbe needs an opportunity to infect a host. While watching the video clip, have your students take notes in their worksheets and have the students reflect on what they have learned. The key points of the lesson's wrap-up is that pathogenicity is a dynamic host-microbe interaction. We'll get there by considering the following question in small groups. Microbes that are not pathogenic in some circumstances may be in others. Are these microbes pathogens? The key point of the lesson's homework is to introduce the life cycles of malaria and Lyme disease. We'll get there by having students read the jigsaw reading on Lyme disease and malaria. One of the most common questions students ask is what's the difference between a microbe and a pathogen? When a microbe is characterized as a pathogen, it has virulence factors that enable it to cause disease frequently. Another question students ask is, do pathogens have more than one virulence factor? Yes, pathogens have a number of specialized virulence factors, enabling them to bypass multiple host immune barriers. In the next few lessons, we will see more examples of host microbe interactions and complex life cycles. 
Don't forget, if you have any questions, concerns, or feedback to let us know. You can contact any of the CTSE team members and we'll be happy to help you.